Hi everybody, I'm so happy to be here today. As I announced before, I'm bringing my dear director, writer of the movie that just came out yesterday, Spiked. Spiked is a film in which we did in 2019, <laughs> which is weird, it feels like so long ago, but it really wasn't. Um, and it's a movie that uh, touches a lot of subjects. It's a movie about you know, you can call it injustice and justice, you can call it immigration. It just covers so much, so much of what it's really happening. And the weirdest thing is that this movie was, is based in true events of, ha of what happened back in the 90s. Uh, when I joined this film, I felt that this is a story that we have to tell. This is a story that I want to be part of. I, this is a story that I want to pass on and really give the honor of, of what happened uh, back then and, and now after what happened in 2020 and 2021 that we're living, it's a story that for sure now really has to come out and now that it's out, uh, it's, I just, I'm just so honored and so excited to bring uh, our writer-director Juan Martinez Vera to this life. I wanted to say thank you so much for your questions. Uh, to him. I have so many great questions to Juan. Um, I, I'm really honored that some of you already watched it. Uh, thank you so much for this support. This is a movie that we really want to make sure that reaches, you know, as, as, as much platform and people as possible. It's a movie about, it's a movie about love. It's a movie about family. It's a movie about uh, justice. And, and, and it's a movie that, um, like I said, is based in a true story. So uh, for me doing this live and bringing Juan uh, Martinez Vera with me, it's, um, it's quite an honor. So let's, um, let's see, bring him in. Thank you so much for being here, you guys. Hi, Hi Juan. everybody. How's everybody doing? <laughs> It's been great. I mean, I, I can't. Can you believe the movie's out? <laughs> I can't. It it feels like yesterday. It's so fast. It's insane that it's already <laughs> in my TV. I mean, when did we start <clears throat> shooting this movie exactly? Was it um, when it did was you start prepping? I started prepping like in April or May 2019, and we finished this just before the pandemic. Wow. Um, yeah, like we're still doing pro post production and the news were out about this pandemic and I was like, what? And, <laughs> you know, this, and, I think this is one of the movies that we started prepping before the pandemic and you were doing post-production throughout this crazy time that we were living mm -hmm, in. Mm -hmm, that, mm -hmm. that, I mean, that, and we kept telling each other because I kept doing ADR and, and we did, I was like, can you believe if we were shooting the movie now? I know, yeah. yeah. We had to ship the microphones to some actors because, you know, it was so delicate that we, we didn't want them to go and we had to, you know, they had to do it remotely and, but, you know, it was, you know, we were able to finish it. So I'm, I'm very happy that despite all the problems, we were able to do it. We got to spike the whole thing. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Spiked us. Right. But the first question is, <clears throat> what does spite mean? What does it mean? It has very uh, many definitions, but um, the main one in the movie is is, is a term used for, uh, for newspapers in the past. Yes. Uh, whenever a story was killed, it was spiked. It was put on a spike, a metal spike that was on, the, on a table. Yeah. Right. We have a scene with that. that <laughs> exactly. Start spiking the table. Yeah, wow. and you know, I was I was looking for names for the movie, and I was like, this is about newspapers. This is about like corruption, violence, and I was looking for a word and I started doing research on like newspaper lingo, you know, newspaper terms. And then this word came up and I'm like, what? It's perfect. <laughs> um, because, you know, you if you watch the movie, you'll see that it also has another meaning that it's in the story. <laughs> so there's multiple meanings to it. But what what is the other meaning that it has in the story? Um, without giving a plot point, uh, it's related to the wife and um, the relationship between them, that it changes in the story. Um, yeah. I'm, I'm assuming most of the people in the live already watched it, but I'm just but being cautious, people who cautious. haven't. <laughs> yeah, be cautious because I'm going to say this and I'm going to post it in all kinds of uh, platforms. So whoever okay. has seen it, I don't want them to know. To what give happened. away. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> 
no, no, no. And uh, so, okay, so it spiked means when somebody stopped the story from being out. Right. How, do you, how did you come across this story? Well, I was contacted by um, the, the John Wilson in the movie. Uh, that guy exists uh, in real life. And I have a relationship with his family uh, through friends. And he called me. He wanted to make a movie. And I was like, okay, is this a joke? Is this like, you know, <laughs> this guy wants to make a movie and he wants to, you know, push it. And I was like, okay, let's, uh, let's talk. Let's meet. And so I traveled to Arizona and I heard his story and I was like, is this even real? Like, wow. Like it took me a little bit to really um, settle, you know, really say, okay, I'm going to make this movie because it was so out, out there. And, um, but once I started doing more research and learn about his story and his life, and I found about the newspaper he started, I said, I have to do this. This is great. Yeah. So um, yeah, it, it was, it was uh, really enough, something that came to me that I attracted somehow. I was just like, oh, wow. Like, now I'm making this movie. This is great, you know? <laughs> you know, it's a movie, Juan, that it talks about media and police, which is like such a, it, it's a movie that it hardly brings those two together. It, mm -hmm, it, it hardly mm -hmm. brings, you know, police and, and media and, and the news. It's like, and how they could really be spiked. And, and, and it's, just, it's just such a great subject to, to bring out now. Um, right. A question is, is there approval needed from the real life people or a red tape to go through before making it? There is a little bit. Um, you have to stick within the story. Um, you know, you, you're given the circle where you have to stay within that circle. You can't write about, you know, make up a lot of things because then it's not inspired by the story. Mm -hmm. But you also don't want to be so specific that you want to pinpoint people's lives. So what you do is, Keep, keep the general story and then just reshape it to make it your own. And, um, and that's what I did. I, I, you know, you know, some of the characters are loosely inspired. Some, some are made up. I totally made up some characters. To um, help it, right? To help uh, the, right. the drama. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I guess it's a balance. You, you, you have to, you can be too specific, but you can be too broad. Um, you, and, um, uh-huh. You know, some of the comments that I got from some of the people that watch it, the community, is that they felt like the dialogue between the characters was so real, so raw. Mm. And then when I got that feedback, I remember talking to you about how can Diana say this in a weird, in a way that is felt more truthful. And I yes. remember you being so open of like, let's sit yes. down, let's, <laughs> let's find your words, let's find that. Do you have the same experience with everybody else? Because I, I can only speak for myself, but I wasn't, we, we, we worked so quick. I wasn't able to like spend so much time with everybody. That, that, and talk that's about what it. I was going to say. We, we, once you got on, once the actors got on board, we like moved so fast that so we fast. couldn't really digest a lot of things. And I, what I usually do in my projects is I, I talk to, to the actors and we workshop the dialogue together. So yes. instead of, you know, uh, acting out something that's uh, written and that feels written. I like to work with the actors to make it natural and and and, and bring their their skills to perform to perform the meaning of the lines. And yeah. and and I think that's what really helps. You know, when you watch a movie, you can it, it feels written, it feels you know odd, but then I I've noticed like really really good actors they like they twi they they inject something to the lines whether it's a little word, a performance, even a breath, yes. something, and it just becomes life. So yeah. I always like to do that for all my movies. And, um, and this was hard. This was a challenge because we had so little time to do it. It was, it was so, you know, compact that I, I almost thought, oh, I hope I can even, you know, I met with you a couple of times, but I had to squeeze as much time because I was getting ready for everything else. And I remember you were in Arizona <laughs> when we were talking and you, you were actually telling me this great news about the paper, the actual yeah. newspaper that we actually shot in there, mm -hmm, that mm -hmm, it was about mm -hmm. to be shut down and we were able to shoot the last mm -hmm. time those machines were up. I was like, what? We're going to make a in, great movie. In any other time in history, we would have never been able to shoot in there because it was used for, you know, for work. But yeah. yeah, the guy's like, oh, you guys have a month to film. <laughs> Come right now and film. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I have a question that somebody's asking uh, that is related to the, to the uh, casting. 
did the casting affect your view on the characters? Um, yes, a lot. Um, I think once the casting director brought in ideas, I com it completely reshaped my understanding of who the characters really? could be. Um, um, yeah, I, I, you know, it was for like, like Bradford, the, the bad cop, I, I, for some reason in my mind, he was, he was going to be like this crazy rough guy. And, and then I realized, um, in retrospect, once I saw like auditions, I'm like, no, 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 it can't be a caricature. It That's can't so be crazy. like, it can't be like a, like a made up guy. Like it has to be somebody real who feels real. And that's what I got from the auditions. I, I, I started seeing the actors send their tapes in and I was like, wait a minute, like he doesn't look bad, but he looks real and he can be bad. And, and maybe we don't want to give away that he's bad right away. Maybe he's ambiguous. Maybe he's, you know, so Those I are think, the real bad ones. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Stay away from the quiet ones. Right. <laughs> but um, yeah, I think the casting grounded me because I was in my imaginary world thinking this is this character is going to be like this. This one's going to be like this. And then when I saw reality, wow. I was like, yes, this is this is better. So, yeah, it definitely shaped my um, my understanding of, of the casting. And wow, mm -hmm. that's uh, one. And, and how do you stay? Uh, how do you find that fine line to be open to reshaping your what you created in your mind? And, and and how do you how do you adjust like okay this is the right how how do you keep that intuition open in mm -hmm. a way that you don't you don't it doesn't go away with the story you know yeah well fifty percent of it is just I I don't have an option <laughs> this is this is what you get N not not casting wise and not only casting wise but like location wise production wise you know. Oh, the the original movie was gonna be set in in a in a Yuma in a in a fields like lettuce fields, and then I I I went to Yuma and I was like oh, I don't know if this is gonna work, and then I went and I I drove by Bisbee the town where we actually filmed. And I was like, this is brilliant. I, I this is where the movie has to be. So oh. half of the time it's it's not a decision that is is the world saying this is better. Like oh. you know this actor is better. You know so I, I I'm not making the decision it's just the world telling me no 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 this is much better and then so you know the other 50 percent, it is challenging because now you have this you're narrowing the options between a and b and you're like oh, i don't know like it, it, it's really hard you know so it, it is a little bit of um staying keeping to the to the story and the meaning and the character and you know making the decision based on story uh, more than anything you know i do remember already being in arizona and going to lunch and you were coming back from a scout we were already <laughs> shooting and, and you're like i found a good location for the scene 32 <laughs> and i looked at you i'm like what you just found it's like it's gonna be brilliant it's gonna be great you, do you have breakfast and i'm like uh I'm yeah about to and, and, and i remember you were like on the clock you were like living this bubble of a storyteller that I mean, at any time I was seeing you, you were like, I found this place. I I, <laughs> I saw this thing. Like you were already shooting one. You were yeah, shooting yeah, yeah. a movie nonstop. And I don't know when the hell you woke up to find a new location. <laughs> I never, I, I have never got to tell you that because I was just like, really? You just got back? <laughs> yeah, it was like an hour away. I'm like, what? I, I, I think, w you know, before you start shooting, you already have your locations and, and everything said. But but you know me, I I I always want something more, something more oh. special. And so like, if time permits, I'm always looking for. Okay, I'm gonna shoot this in three weeks, but <laughs> I know I can crazy. find something better. <laughs> which which so. is something. That's why I wanted to bring it up because you're this kind of storyteller or writer director that the same way you are like that with your vision on the story. Like you always wanna, you don't never settle. The same thing you are with the dialogue, with the story, with the characters. You're always available and open to like right. whatever. If it's like a location thing, I'm going to get up at four in the morning and I'm going to drive to whatever <laughs> the hell and I'm going to see how the sunset goes and I will get it. <laughs> and it's like, I mean, it worked. And, 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 and I wanted to say from an actor's perspective or a team player, it, it, it's huge. It, it makes everything change, you know, when you have you know, your director, writer. And by the way, that's like amazing that you have one person <laughs> that does both. Does both. 
And it's, it's yeah. open to those, to, to both worlds, you know, the left and right side of the brain. Mm-hmm, it's like, mm-hmm. it's, they're working at the same time. And, and, and I, I just really don't, didn't take it for granted. And I, I kept being so surprised about your, you know, <laughs> need to keep finding the locations, you know, that's like right. huge. No, but um, it's, it's, it's the part of, of the magic that I love on set is it's a fluid thing. It's, it's alive, you know, it performances. I don't know how on the next take you're going to do it. And, and you, you are, you might surprise everybody. And it's, it's great. I never, even if I would have sat down and, and thought about this line for 20 hours, I would have never done it. And you did it in one second. You're like, you adjusted no, you <laughs> one thing and there it is. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We're good. I do- and you were able, another thing that I really appreciated about your work is that you know the story really well. And also, we actually had the real Joe on set, mm-hmm, by the way, mm-hmm. because this question that she asked was like, was it hard to, to write a real true story? I'm like, we got the real guy on set. He would literally yeah. <laughs> stop by just yeah. to say hello. And, 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 and the stories that he would talk about, about his ex-wife poisoning him or whatever, it's like, we're like, yeah. oh my God. It's a, it's a, it was a luxury. We, not many people. It was a, yeah, it was, um, it, it, it made it, it made it easier in some ways because, uh, you know, like I said, it was limited. I couldn't write about other things. And I, I, he also talked to the actors about his experience. And so, yeah, Aiden um, was laughing the entire time. Like, when oh, I first yeah. met Aiden, he's like, do you meet Joe? I'm like, no, I haven't. <laughs> Come over. Come on, you're going to meet this guy. We, we, you're going to oh, laugh. God. And we had lunch, and it was just like nonstop laughing. This guy has the best sense of humor. It's like, yes. it's someone that you need to write a story about. It's, Absolutely. Uh, it's, yeah. <laughs> it's that kind of a thing. Okay. What parts of your story, oh, no, sorry, what parts of your history and life story drew you into want to make this story and commit your time and energy to bring it to life? Uh, I mean, I come from an immigrant family, so. I immediately connected to that part of the story. And um, I, I just think that, you know, when I was writing about the immigrants and the struggles and all that stuff, you know, my family lived through that. And so I, for me, it was very important to put this in the story and to balance it out with John's storyline. Um, so that was part of it. The other part is I'm always, I mean, I'm, I'm like a news junkie and I'm always consuming news and, yeah, a lot of a lot of the projects that I have done before have been influenced by what I watch on the news. So this newspaper uh, concept of, of keeping the police accountable was like, you know, the my light bulb went up and I'm like, yeah, this is great. This is fantastic. Um, and then, you know, the character, it, it was challenging for me because I'm, I'm, I'm more of a, of a drama, you know, hardcore guy. And, and Joe and John is he's more of a half, you know, he's, he's very fun. And, 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 and he might be talking about serious stuff, but he has a smile on his face. You know, it, it, it's, it's like, it, it was interesting for me to, to write with uh, on his character, just because I had never done something where it, it's so, it, it's so, it's fun, but at the same time, it, 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 you know, it's, it's a hard theme to, to, to take on, but, uh, but it was a challenge. It was fun. I, I, I enjoyed every single part of it. What I, like I said, what I love about the story, it, it really, it, I think I told you this last year when you were pro, like finishing this up and it was just pandemic, you know, it was challenging to put things together. And it's like, I, everybody thinks that we did this after the pandemic or during pandemic. And now this is mm. free. Uh, but uh, what I loved about the story is that it had, it had, it's real subject matter, which is immigration, right? We have mm-hmm. the cops, the situation with the cops. We have also the relationship with John and his wife, which is like in itself is like its own story. It's another and, story, yeah. And then we have the news and how if we are so connected, you know, how mm-hmm. our lives are really, it's just really a circle. And this is what the kind of like the U.S. is. It's like, you know, family. Mm-hmm. It's like your inheritance, like John you know what the newspaper meant to him and 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 the comedic side of it too like right he, right it's hard to have a character that is trying to change the world when he's like funny <laughs> in a weird weird way not trying to be 
And um, yeah, in the in the feedback that I got from that community, one of the things that they absolutely loved and they <laughs> thought it was hilarious was the camera with a flash. <laughs> oh my god, it was so such a good touch, like the flip phone. It was like, oh, I didn't know you had flash. It's like you know those moments that it's like, uh, do you come up with that or that? I mean, how do you come yeah. up with those details? Because that's like, I, you don't yeah. expect it. You don't no. expect it. No, no. I I just, you know, once you sit and write, you know, imagination kicks in and you're like, oh, yeah, he's going to take a picture. But then hold on. What if it's dark and, you know, there's a flash? Yeah, let's throw it in. And, and honestly, <laughs> honestly, you always throw these things on the, in the script, hoping that somebody's going to catch you and be like, Juan, this is ridiculous. Don't put it on or whatever, it's you know, hilarious. And, and nobody said anything. So I'm like, all right, you might, you know, it's really? working. Everybody so. here, everybody, and, <laughs> and it was like, oh my god, because I love when Carlos said, I didn't know you had flash, like I didn't know, like it's, it's like obviously I just bought it. It, it was so it was hilarious. It was right, really right, funny. right. Um, okay, because it's based in true events. What were you as a writer and director the most focused on in wanting to get correct while telling this story? Can you repeat that? Sorry, my audio. Yeah, because it's based on a true event. Mm -hmm. What were you as a writer and director the most focused on in wanting to correct the story? Well, story, I mean, telling the story. I was, uh, I mean, it's, that's, it's a good question because um, you always want to stick to the truth of the story. Um, but I, I think with characters, you can play around, you know, with locations, you can definitely play around. You can change this happened in this imaginary town and whatnot. And, but I, but I think the core is, is the themes. You know, you, you can't make this about, uh, you know, something so completely detached. It has to be about justice. It has to be about the truth. It has to be about doing what's right for your community. Um, these things kind of like give it the identity to the story. And everything else can shift a little bit. You know, it, this could have been, a, 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 you know, another state or another country or whatever. But But if you stick to the themes, then the story stays together, you know, the, the whole yeah. structure. Yeah. And also everybody in the world can relate to, you don't have to be mm -hmm. basically like an immigrant to understand what's like to be in a vulnerable place or, or, right. or, or to feel that you've been under appreciated or in any shape or form. And I think that has, it, whatever we can do around it to, to amplify that, that's uh, and, and it, and it was told really nicely. And really, the locations were great. It really told, yes. <laughs> you know, Arizona is so beautiful. Bisbee, how did you find Bisbee? Was it was it the locals there told you? Because mm. it's such a, it's a town that I tell people. Do you know Bisbee? They, they have no idea. <laughs> it's really hard to find. Yeah, I, I but drove. It's such a complex story. I mean, itself, the, the actual yes. Town. Oh yeah, they have a documentary about the whole town and the BG history. Seventeen, and it's, I watched it. It's uh, pretty it dark. <laughs> yeah, it was. Yeah. Um, yeah, no, I, it? I I went on a drive around Arizona and um, drove everywhere, and then somebody told me, "Oh, there's a little town." Actually, somebody told me there's somebody who might be able to give you ideas, but he lives down south, and I was all the way up north, and that was gonna be like four-hour drive and I'm like I'll do it I'm here to scout locations let's do it so I know I drove there <laughs> and as soon as I, I was passing this town he didn't live in this town he lived like 20 minutes away from this town but as I drove I like turned I'm like no way and I had to stop and, and drive around and I'm like this is it it's the the place this is great I'm gonna you know make the film here and also production wise because it's such a small town any company move, you're still within the same, you know, it's like a mini Walking set. Walking distance in a weird yeah, way. Yeah, exactly. So strange. it made so much sense to, to make the movie there. And strangely enough, there were um, a couple of films back in the black and white era that filmed there. And they have a yeah. museum with a bunch of um, movies. Westerns were made there. So they had some production. And everything was so authentic to that, to that time. It's old. Like we didn't mm -hmm. come up with like, that it created such a huge production value and, yes. and, and we it looked like we kind of made it all up like people thought <laughs> I actually was telling the, my community I'm like that's Bisbee then. that is this town that it's stuck in in in, the, in time like it doesn't yes it, you, you don't see anything that represents 
reality today. Like, so it was just a perfect movie to shoot, like, you know, a period piece, like, in the 90s, you know? Like, yeah, and, and I think you, when you look, look for locations, you, you, you also look for character. And this place had, oh, you know, its yes. unique character. It's, it, you know, it almost speaks to you a little bit, you know? It's like, oh, wow, okay. <laughs> the moment you're, like, you pass Tombstone from Arizona, and you start seeing that hill in there, you're like, oh, wow. I, I can totally see how you were like, I want to make my movie here. <laughs> but, yeah, you it's... know, it's, 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 a very, it's a very interesting. It was really nice. It was weird. Yeah. I, I, it kind of changed my life, that town, to be honest. Yeah, and it and also if... had ghosties and all that. <laughs> no, if I was going to say, if you guys need a travel location, it's a popular um, traveling place. <laughs> they have tons of hotels, tons of Airbnbs. <laughs> I hear there's concert like music raves and concerts going on all the time and so um yeah 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 it's it's a beautiful okay I have a question your casting choices for these roles feel wonderfully de deliberate for example Diana as a champion of justice being a young hispanic woman who is bridging this white and brown communities together were you choosing to stick closely to characters matching the real people from this, these events or did you allow yourself to go outside those margins for characters ca for characters casting into what might serve the story in other ways? Yeah, I was I was pretty flexible on my casting. I I really wrote the script, put it aside, and I I looked at the casting with fresh eyes. You know, I I and I think that's what you want to do because sometimes what you think is better for a role, it's definitely it changes. You know, when you see the yeah. the person perform and give you something new that you're like holy shit, she has so much range. I never thought this character would have that range, but it works. It's, it yeah. works with the story. And um, so I, I'm flexible. I'm, I'm not really strict about, like, th this is what I wrote. This is the character. I want this five feet, three inches, you know, person. <laughs> to <laughs> No, I'm, I'm pretty flexible. And um, I, I think, if anything, the casting uh, gives you ideas. The actors give you ideas. Right. I mean, I, I would say... I mean, this is my mantra. It's like actors are the real storytellers. You know, they're the ones mm -hmm. telling you the story. And the, the, the best thing you can do as a director is listen to their voice and, and the way they interpret the character and t put that in, into the story, you know, inject that into the script. And, and that's what happened. And I'm, I'm so happy that I was able to because my editor um, read the story on script. And when she watched the film, she's like, this is different. Like, it... it actors completely change every single part of the story and um <laughs> and you have to be you know welcoming their input to 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 give it the full potential you know if if you only say i'll take half of what you give me let's keep off half of what i have it it, it doesn't have the full energy it needs you know it it's, it's a compromise true. you know when you cast you're marrying that person yeah. you're listening to them you're letting them take you know control over your story it's their story now and ultimately people are going to see them and not yeah. not the guys behind camera so they're they're to me the true storytellers and i i i always love working with actors because they're so creative and <laughs> like by the time we're actually filming my mind is so tired i'm like all right i have no ideas but then <laughs> actors bring so many ideas and what if we do it this way or what if my character has this background i'm like yeah, I never thought about yeah. it, but it works, you know. So I do, I do remember that experience on set. We were in this crazy heat, and mm -hmm. you had this crazy hat to kind of like <laughs> to keep yourself together because you have to be, you know, you're one of those directors that are really running. Like, what do you need? Yeah. Okay, I'll be back. <laughs> okay, and then you're like, you're not like screaming at us from from like far away yeah. to like oh, and and <laughs> I remember every time you you will come and I. Uh, I would see you and by the moment you start walking I'm like I know I know he's happy because you're like <laughs> oh my god I love I you know like you're very expressive with your with your with your directions and when you're like happy or or surprised it's like it comes out of you from like far away and it's like it's like I'm like Aiden we're good we're good one is like whatever direction is gonna give us it's going to be, we're in the right path here. <laughs> and I was like, Ada would be like, good, because it's freaking hot here. <laughs> it's like so hot. It's, uh, oh one God. day, oh my God, it's just um, like the weather was like yes. incredibly, it, you know, it was like another challenge. You had to work around the weather to make sure, because, you know, you you can give me 100%, but if you're waiting for a couple hours under that heat, 
it's gonna it's gonna be so challenging to do that and yeah, I that was that was my takeaway. Don't film in Arizona during the summer. <laughs> <laughs> it makes things a lot harder. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I I remember, I remember the crew member saying, "Oh, we're shooting." You know, the local crew members, "Oh, we're shooting in the summer." Okay, sure. Like they didn't think it was gonna happen, and oh, we're actually shooting right now. Okay, let's <laughs> be ready, get ready, because it's gonna be like, yeah, no, it was it was a fun. And one day stormed so much. It's like we were in Bisbee and oh and yeah, we had to cancel. Stormed. We had to cancel. Like all these unusual circumstances. It's like it's again. You have to be flexible when you tell a story. Oh uh, yeah, one, yeah. This is a cool question. Uh, there are three stories in a script: the one that you write, the one the one that you shoot, and the one that you watch. Mm -hmm. Do you go through each one of them for real? Do you go through? Like the story that you wrote is different to the one that you experience on set and the one that you watch, or do you mm -hmm. kind of like r wrap it up around the story that you wrote? No, I, I think um, if anything, once we get to the editing room, uh, you know, script is thrown away. Uh, <laughs> That's crazy. You, you only have you only have what you got. You know, even in, if the script said this beautiful sunrise and the the birds are flying by and. Uh, you know, you didn't shoot that. So it, 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 you stick to, to the shot you got and then you tell the story with works. what you have. Yeah. And um, I always say like in, in Spanish, uh, script is, is guía. Una guía. Uh, guión. Guión. And, and, and the translation more or less is like a guide. A guide. So it's really just the point in the direction. And once the film is, is, is in production, you're actually creating something with that guide. You know, you're, you're, you're sticking to the framework, but then... You're injecting so much more information, you know, every turn, every look, everything is, is more information. And, and the editing is really where the magic is made, you know, it's, um, yes. it's, it's also the, the most uh, nerve wracking for me. It was just like, oh, I love that scene, but it doesn't work. Okay, let's, oh, <laughs> let's man. kill it, you know, and uh, yeah, yeah, it's, it's the place, it's brutal. For me, editing is like, oh it's man. It's hard I, one. It's the hard one, yeah, because the editor is always right. You know, the director is always going to say, let's do this, let's do this. But you're doing it because you're emotionally attached to so many things, you know. And yeah. the editor the editor hasn't seen anything. She didn't. She wasn't on set. And she was like, right. this works, this doesn't work, this works, this doesn't work. And you can fight as much as you want and be like, "This, it worked. I know it worked. And then you watch it and you watch it and you're like, she's right, it doesn't work. <laughs> <laughs> And you have yeah. to, you know, be honest with yourself about the story and, um, yeah. And, and what about the music? Because the mm -hmm. music, um, I got two people that actually talked about the music. It's, cool. uh, they've never been to Arizona, but it gives them an Arizona feel to it. But they don't know what, why that is. Like, do you, how do you do that? Like, it's, it, it wasn't meant to be more like for the feeling or, or the space or it's a mix of both. I mean, I think it was it was that the world was definitely um, there. You know, QB, the composer, he's great at creating. I mean, I watch some of his films, and it's nature. Like a lot of his films have nature, you know, and, and oh. he he has a way to put music on nature that is so incredible. Like it just flows, you know. And mm -hmm. um, so he he has that skill set already. And uh, you know, what what we talked about was just making it feel local and, and enhancing the story and um, really uh, the range, you know, we were really interested in, in, in their scenes that are high and their scenes that are low and their scenes that are suspenseful and scenes that are comedic. So it's, I would have to say it was a challenge. It was a challenge to create a, a score that felt like one thing, you know, because this could have been like, Oh, I, the score is funny here. The score, the score is horror, you know, horror here, suspense, and and it's because a monster it of many heads. It had because a lot of everything. everything. So how <laughs> yeah. can you keep it all together? And that was the exactly. question. Exactly. Like, like yeah. was it was it was it more uh, in tune to like a specific style or or, or because you could you can't pick one tone. It's like right, it's, right. It's not like you know Jaws that is like da, da, like every time you know it's like <laughs> oh here is the shot. Yeah. It's just like. He has a little bit of everything. Everything, yeah. Or comp so I mean, I have to give the credit to my composer. He he has such a good feel and take for 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 how to do it, you know. Because that was a conversation we had, and 
I have no idea. I was gonna, you know, our, our conversation ended is like, good luck. Like, I have no idea how this is gonna be like, feel good like luck. one thing. And, <laughs> I, and and he he like made it happen. You know, he has the wow. the knowledge and and, 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 and and when he showed us, everything he sent us was great. You know, it was, it was actually some very minor tweaks here and there, but I was like, wow, like, wow, incredible. You know, he's he's on top of it, so. You know, I yeah. you know how music it's I mean, every storyteller, we, we have to attach music to everything we do. Like it's part of our language to, to communicate and and music can really change the tone of the scene. Mm -hmm. It mm -hmm. can really like I could have like an intention and the moment you put like a a tone in the music, it's like it changes the performance. Absolutely, and, and yeah. it's like so. Giving your 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 movie to a, a, a you know composer, it's like it's like they also have to create their own story within the music, and mm -hmm. and, mm -hmm. and, and and that is not easy, right? Like mm -hmm. you picking that kind of person, it's like uh, it's key to telling the story. <laughs> absolutely, Especially no. When it has all kinds of no, and absolutely. Holes. And and at one point, you know, the movie fell too dark and, and too depressing and oh this guy died and it's it's a yeah. challenge, you know, they're fighting the cops and it just it felt heavy and, and the music lifted it. You know, the music made it float it a little bit. It helped to keep going to see what can yes. happen next. Yes, and, 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 and that was something that as a director I didn't see coming from far away. I was like, This is gonna be hardcore drama, it's gonna be great and it's gonna be dark. <laughs> And then the casting changed things. It, it was it wasn't oh. dark anymore. It was a little bit more alive. And they were right. You know, the the actual guy was funny. Why you know why keep this drama so serious? Let's open it up a little bit, play around layer. with tone, add a layer here and there. And then by the time we came to editing, music was the same. I in my mind it was gonna be darker. Oh. And then no 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 like this has to be like like lighter and and, and move fast and you know be feel feel different yeah so wow it's was, it's how uh-huh yeah no no tell me, tell me no it's how it's how the story tells itself you know it's just like you didn't make that choice but it's the story wants to be this way and and you you have to let it breathe a little bit and and take it from there that's what was the most challenging part on telling the story like um, from the beginning to the end man uh that's interesting um <laughs> I mean, let me think. think. I, I mean, I, the only thing that comes to mind, and and you know, I, w once the the first version of the movie was done, w you know, we went back and and reshot some other stuff oh, because yeah, I, I I I mean I, I we we always want as filmmakers, you know, if you give me the chance to go back and, and shoot more, sh let's do sure. it, you know, Same and and actors. once. Like you want one more? Sure, I, I will take one more take. Absolutely. Let's do it. And yeah. and so my producer Permelita, he 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 was able to make that happen. And um, and it was so challenging because it was during the pandemic. So I had so many ideas. Oh my god! Like we're gonna make all these scenes with the lead actors and all that. And 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 because of pandemic uh, protocol, you know, only shoot outdoor. You only have limited hours. You can't shoot all the time. Everybody needs to be t like so many restrictions or budget was just like decrease. And we, we really had to handpick the, the few scenes we, we could film additionally. Yeah. And that was for me the hardest because I was like, oh, my heart was broken. I was like, damn, like, you know, I wish we could do more. You know, you were there. You, you were one of the ones that, that could make it. And I was like, I wish I could do more scenes with Diana. Like, and, and it was just like, no, we only have like this this amount of time because we have to pay for testing. We have to pay for masks. We had to pay for traveling. You know, traveling. There, uh, th we had to pay for a special team to be uh, COVID compliant. So they they were ha following the guides, and so our days of production got reduced drastically. So I even if I wanted to shoot more with you and with other actors, it was like, nope, no, pick pick the one scenes that you absolutely need, and and That's let's do rough. it. That's yeah, I mean. so I think that was the hardest for me. It was just like, oh man, I have to be very specific because I, you know, I <laughs> can't. I, yeah, and with COVID, if somebody gets sick or something happens, you have to be ready to like call it quits. You can't move on, um, you know. So it was very hard to do. I think that was the hardest. 
you know, working with that mask on like 12 hours in the heat, it was like, it holy. Was, <laughs> it was tough. Yeah, um, no, it was hard. But I have to say, the, those things that we added really, prof- re- you really pinpoint the right places mm-hmm. to put more, to nurture more in the story. I, I yeah. watched it and I was like, oh, there's closure there. There is, mm-hmm. There's a closure that you were telling me about, but because I haven't seen it at that time, I was like, oh, whatever we have to do, I, I don't care. What, what, what are we doing? <laughs> okay, great. This. Yeah, but no, I, and... when I watch it, I was like, oh, yes, this is, this is, mo- <laughs> this is it, it gives closure to that side of the story. Yeah, and, and, and I, I want to give credit to my editor and, and my producer because they were the you know people who pushed me the most and once I was like a little lost and like the ending worked, the ending doesn't work, the ending worked, you know, like they, they really uh, helped me Nailed to. Nailed it down. Yes. Um, I had an excellent team and, and I, I wouldn't be able to, to see that clearly without their, their help. So, you know what? You need those people. You need those people. You need, you need mm-hmm. to be surrounded by people that, that see you for who you are, your talent, and also understand the story you want to tell. Yes. And then when you yourself, get lost because you're like in the middle of everything is inside you Mm -hmm. they can really pull you back on track and and say Mm -hmm. you know this is the story you told us you want to tell this is Mm -hmm. the reason why Mm -hmm. and then you it's like everything kind of and we all need that we need that as actors you know right we need we need to have that director that really understands the story so when we are like in this crazy dark place whatever we're telling that it can really guide you it's it's Mm -hmm. like a domino effect it's one of those things that you can just you you, ha- you need it you absolutely uh, need it yeah yeah what did you learn from juan that's for me and how <laughs> did, did he inspire you and juan what did you learn from tonight and how did she inspire you i'm gonna oh, start yes I'm go gonna, ahead well when i got the story i was i, I really i i knew your work i knew you did this uh is it a short or a mm-hmm. mid-length film you did a short, short yeah. s- spark Mm-hmm. Uh, and I watched it and, and I thought, oh, my God, this is a person that is telling a story about Venezuela and he's not Venezuelan and he's Latino, but he under- he's interested in how he's, he wants to tell a story and educate us about what's happening in the country. And, and, and for, by the way, Latinos, it's like usually you only Venezuelans would tell that story. If it's a Mexican mm-hmm. story, only Mexicans would tell it like it like. It's very unusual to, for a Latino to tell somebody another country's story from Latin America. And I felt, oh, he really cares about storytelling. About, And you really combined, you know, what happened in that country, which is a political issue. And, and also creatively as a storyteller, you really did a good bridge right there. And, mm-hmm. and, and, and that is really hard to find. I mean, I... I, I, I watched everything and I, I just thought, oh, and now he wrote this. Oh, and, and, and it's a huge issue that I, you know, political stories are really hard to tell. And especially in our Latinx co- community, we hardly have storytellers that really pinpoint political issues that we need to talk about. And, mm-hmm, and, mm-hmm. and I don't want to put myself as an actor in the hands of somebody that's never done it, that really just it's trendy because it is trendy mm-hmm, mm-hmm. <laughs> and, and it's some you know and, and I was like I don't want to be put in a place where this person really is underestimating how difficult telling this kind of story is you know when you talk politics or or the situation is it's like you have to love it because if you don't people sometimes they get involved in things that they don't really know they like it but they're they're you have to be flexible, like you were saying, you know, yeah, and, yeah. and, and when I, and I was really inspired by that. I don't know if I told you that, but I remember telling you about Spark and I was like, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I love that you were not just somebody that is, it's, it wants to tell the story of their country. You're really doing that. And I did the same thing with La Cura. I tell a story about a yeah. Mexican Mm-hmm. situation and I'm not from Mexico but I, I, I and I understood where you come from and I really trusted I was really inspired by that so when you wrote this I'm like okay I have a filmmaker that is passionate about storytelling is touching a political issue that is that I really care about and then, and then the rest was bonus it's funny it's like dramatic it's like <laughs> suspense it's like what's right. gonna happen next and it's based in a true event it's like you got the best world of all and 
and I, I remember I was casted before a bunch of the other actors and you were running things by me and I was like, mm -hmm, oh, I love mm -hmm. his vision. I love, I remember when you casted Ricky. Uh, yeah, we had a conversation about that. I remember that. I remember <laughs> when you were casting Levinsky and I was like, he would be the perfect outsider that would come to this town that it would bring so much depth into, you know, yeah. having a past and, 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 and fair enough, by the way watching Lovinsky play that role, the, the, the Ricky Johnson. <laughs> <laughs> I, I really appreciated that. And I remember, I remember talking to one about it. And, and that conversation, I was like, I'm talking to somebody that really wants to, because you weren't, you, you, like you said, you were so open about the actors. Mm -hmm. you, you, you were not picturing, actually, Diana, is, she's not even Latina. Diana is like a white girl from Arizona. Mm -hmm, and it was, mm -hmm. I mean, she, she was not, I thought she was Latina. And I, the fact that, uh, that, you know, but she did, she was passionate about story, you know, telling the story. And, and the fact that we made her Latina and we made her be that bridge that, that, um, you know, wanted to, that, that bridge that, the, that, that put together the, the Americans and the immigrants, you know, like she was like the, the one right. that talked, the, the translator, the, the one that was trying to, wrap it all up to make it, it made so much sense it was it was you know it works so much better that way because you yeah. even with relationships you're telling the story so yes yes and, and 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 you know carlos too carlos gomez like i like i remember the real guy that played the, uh, his real best friend was no latino either right and, no, I I heard it. <laughs> and I, fi I figured that out instead with the real guy he's like oh diana is not latina i wish she was <laughs> and i'm like <laughs> yeah no she's like a girl from here i love her and she was passionate she guided me through it she, yeah. she got in travel like me and so those things i, I really was inspired by your flexibility oh. and, and also being able to tell a story that talks about politics and and, and storytelling because Juan, th those are the hardest stories to tell. Yeah. They're really difficult and, and to be truthful. And like you said, we started really talking about this, how to be centered into one, one objective and be flexible about this other 50%. It's like you, it's not a normal, it's, it's not a normal way to tell a story. You know mm -hmm, what I mean? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, yeah. And, and, no. and only very few people can do that. And I was able to see that with your other work. So I was cool. like, I'm inspired by this guy. <laughs> Let's do it. <laughs> Let's do it. No, I mean, you know, what I learned from you was, you know, if I have to narrow it down to one word, it has to be range. You know, you have so much range, not only on your performance, but you're more than just an actress. You know, you, you really have these skills of like storytelling, production, even, you know, giving notes in, in the screenwriting. So it, it, it was definitely one of a kind, you know, it's, it's almost like, oh, wow, she's the sweetest quiet, quiet girl before camera. And then when she's in front of camera, you're like, you're like, hold, hold back. Like <laughs> what happened to the, you know, to the other Danae? So you have these like transformations and, it's very, you know, I didn't, you know, I see it in other actors, but for some reason when I saw you, it was like very distinct. Like one moment you're here and one moment you're there and one moment and, you know, from the story, I never would have imagined Diana as having that quality, but then it makes so much sense. You know, it was like, holy shit, that gives Diana that special twist that she, that yeah. she needs. Um, it, it so was, yeah, that's, that's what I learned from you is like, well, an actor can also be this huge collaborator that can give you notes, that, you know, can guide you, can, yeah, you know, yeah. it's, it's so much more than just telling someone what, what she's doing is good or bad or, all right, good take, let's move on. You know, it's, it's, it's a relationship where, you know, it's, a, we're both telling the story. So um, yeah. that was something that I really took home uh, from you, uh, that you, 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 you have so much range outside the performance, you can, you can put on the producer hat and be like, hey, let's, you know, I like, you know, I like this, but what if we do something different and whatnot? And, and that was really fun. It was fun. really fun. It yeah. was really fun. We, I remember <laughs> we worked together, the scene with Carlos and, 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 and Aiden. And I remember when we started blocking, we all felt like, well, we, we would not be in the space like this. And how can mm -hmm, we do mm -hmm. it? And I started moving this way. I'm like, what if I just enter and I, 
I, I shot, I mean, I, I just like enter really quick and I, yeah. and, and, and they were like, Oh, Oh, and that, that kind of helped the move the pace of the movie. And yeah. And, yeah, and definitely. you know, when I was shooting this film, Juan, I don't think I told you this cause I was living it. I felt this weight in my shoulder. Like I remember, mm -hmm. you know, I, I shoot a show for like seven, nine months out of the year now. And I, and it's very intense, very physical. And I don't have this weight in my shoulder, but shooting spike, I don't know why. I mean, I didn't know. Now I know because I watched the movie. <laughs> I was like, oh, I know what happened. I felt this weight in my shoulder of, of like, and it's like, it's, it was not just the scenes or, or the heat. It was just more emotional attachment to this role. And I kept telling you the enemy yeah. a lot to me, but I didn't know until I watched it. And I felt like this woman is the newspaper. Mm -hmm. she, she she's the being heart yeah she's the people she represents yes it, it, the, the newspaper means a lot to john but he had other issues that it's not just the newspaper you know yeah, yeah and, and yeah. also and also carlos relationship with john is, but diana is she's straightforward on the truth the mm -hmm. people and the and, and the and the newspaper so and the fact that the newspaper was always compromised i was mm -hmm. carrying mm -hmm. this this thing with me that I didn't realize that I had, but I was living it. And, and he shows like every time I, I'm like always on this kind of like, John, relax, John, calm down. Don't, don't talk too much, John. Because in my head, I'm like, they're going to close the newspaper. They're going to, they, they, yeah. they, they, my life is going to, it's going to be over. And, and it's weird because in the story, the way that they describe my character is, you know, she would work for less as long as you don't give her the sports or whatever. So she is willing to <laughs> she wants more. Compromise. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, and those are things that I, the only reason I got there was because of your, your openness to, to allow actors to do that. And I, I remember talking to Walter and Levinsky and Sal, by the way, Sal's performance was just magical. It's incredible. Yeah. He took yes. it and made it his own and, Yes. Yeah. Were, were you planning on that, on that kind of performance, more like on the quiet side? I love that he was so quiet inside. So, like loud. Yeah, everything he said was pretty strong. Yeah, no, I, even fr from the, you know, from, even from before when he read, I was like, oh, wow, this guy oh, really? is was the real thing. Was he always like that? He, he, oh, he knew the character. He, he interpreted it from the beginning and I was like, all right he he's got it he has the what he needs so yeah no it's um he was great he he's, he's great he what i love about sal's character and everybody talked about it it's that he was so loud it was the loudest one and the one that talked the most the, the lowest and, mm -hmm, and, mm -hmm. and that was um even when i was translating he was not even he was just like delivering his lines waiting for me to translate and he was so loud and, and yeah i remember i remember doing that those scenes of translating feeling like oh my god like why why is this so difficult like <laughs> I, I mean I, I i'm listening and translating like how hard could this be i know what i have to say but i, I was just so caught up in that yeah. intensity that he brought to it yeah, no, I mean, after watching the first version, I, my heart was strong because I'm like, oh, my God, so many great characters. I want this movie to be like two hours or three hours because because their their story could be so I want much it to more. be a miniseries. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. Like Diana has so much backstory. Sal has so many things that we would have learned from him. Like yes. all these characters have a little bit of um, something else that, he, they, you know, that could be expanded. So, um what what yeah. is it that you like about when you combined uh you know a political factor with the with the storytelling what when do you realize that this is something that you feel very inclined because you're a very social person you're very yeah. receptive when do you realize that this is your path as a storytelling i mean i mean i think it comes from my own story you know having to immigrate and sort of like mm. see the world from that perspective um seeing you know detaching myself and and seeing okay this works like this and this works like that and i can't you know there's some the world is not like an open world there's borders and there's rules and you know it, it's it you see the world from a different perspective and i think when stories come to me and and i see that perspective i'm like okay yeah this is great 
this is going to be fun. That's <laughs> crazy. That's what really hooks you, huh? Yeah, it hooks me. It, you know, it's it's not that I come out with these things. It's more like the things that I, uh, like, come to, to see that I'm like, yeah, that works, and that's great, and this character is great, you know? And because this story had so many other things that I had to, like, really just narrow it down to this one little storyline with these few characters, you know? Like, wow. the guy who gave me his story had... 80 years of story you know i had to pick the one year that <laughs> he did the one thing and he interacted with these few characters and and it was just that moment that um i felt like i connected to you know because of my story because of the way the story tells you something about the world and um and again like it's it's uh it's hard to put all that in an hour and a half you know i wish i had more time and more budget to expand the themes and the story and make it very deep and but um, but you have to work with the restrictions you get. So, well, I have to say, you know, we worked pre-pandemic in the heat. We we nailed it. <laughs> but you <laughs> you worked pandemic post-production, which is like pretty pretty unbelievable. And, and yeah. I could not be more grateful to have a story today in 2021 that touches all these subjects that. You know, when you when you kind of like tell stories like this, it not only entertains, but it also educates, mm -hmm, and, you know, mm -hmm. and we we are humans. We we since we are little, the first thing they do to us is read us stories like we learn with stories like every child has somebody read them a story before going to bed or it's like it's it's just the way that we we think and we learn and and. You know, I, I really love that you have this, this, this kind of path with like this unusual way to to kind of connect to storytelling because it, it would not only entertain us, it would, mm -hmm. it would also grow grow as humans. And and again, you know, I, I'm really I'm really hoping this is not our last movie. <laughs> I know, and I, I can't wait for the next uh, project. Yeah, <laughs> I'm excited, and and uh, but I, I really. I really cared about pushing this because it's a, it's a it's it's everything that strangely enough is everything that's happening today. Mm -hmm, um, mm -hmm. Actually, while we were shooting, there was some issue with cops at the border that you that it was oh, in yeah. the newspaper, mm -hmm. which is insane. It's it, it's crazy. It's we, the story I, repeating itself. Yeah, it is a story. It's it's like how do you call it? It's art. Uh, imitating, imitating uh, reality, reality, and and yeah. or, or reality imitating art. art. Vice know, versa, yeah, yeah. We don't know how uh, that's gonna work, but uh, but I just um, I think we answer all the questions. I don't want to take much. Or, can you believe <laughs> we've been talking for an hour about I, this? It felt like fifteen minutes, but it's uh, I never done this by the way. It is my first live in Instagram, so thanks everybody really? for your questions. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> no, first well, time. Well, I'm gonna be saving this. It's gonna be on my. It's gonna be on my Instagram, but I'm gonna put it, at, and I'm gonna put it everywhere. Uh, definitely, we'll go into the spiked uh, Facebook if if they would like it, because I will. I will definitely send it. Because everything we talked about, without giving spoilers, uh, yeah. it it really it, it makes people understand really what we did and 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 why it's out there. And and I let's see. Somebody said this story makes so much sense within the time and place it held nothing felt forced to me yeah no <laughs> it was this oh you know i wanted to say one more thing there was a time in the story that uh levinsky ricky was sitting in the in the what's it called in the bar in, no in the bar in the cafeteria and they yeah. come and drop off the paper i don't know why i laughed so much at that moment <laughs> I mean, because the guy looked at him, oh, he's a cop. Oh, my God, he's the one in the newspaper. <laughs> Put it in and run. <laughs> I mean, I just want to say, I never I never tell you that, but those moments, I make me laugh so hard. <laughs> you know, you don't expect that, but that's that's like your worst freaking nightmare. It's like when you're right, reading right. paper, I'm like, oh, this guy is like, we're looking for this guy. Oh, that's him. Oh, shoot. <laughs> Oh my god! Oh, wow. And that and that's kind of like tokens yeah. Like, I I remember yeah. I remember from before shooting that my producer and I we we didn't want to make just one really serious movie. We wanted to make it like you know that a little bit so fun. True. So <laughs> yeah, that was so true. And I love Levinsky. He didn't know he was in the newspaper. He looked at he's like, what the hell? What was <laughs> running like that? Oh crap! It's me. <laughs> crap. Right. So it was just.
just like, you know, the cast, I wanted to close this saying, Juan, that you have put together, a, first of all, a beautiful film that it, it's out. Um, but the cast, we all became friends. Like we actually text each other. It's, mm -hmm. I think to all the projects that after we wrap, I never hear from them unless it's a premiere. And after that, we don't really talk. It's like, but it's not something that, It's, it's forced, it's just the way it happens. It's like you mm -hmm. can force relationships, but this cast, for some reason, we are so in touch. We, we care, like, like even through the pandemic, how are you doing? Hey, do you do a DR? Hey, how was the reshoot? Hey, do you have fun? Oh, take, I took a picture with Sal and I sent it to the boys. That it's like being, it, it, the, connect, the chemistry and the connection that was created, it, it sparked something beautiful that it's um that i i i don't take it for granted you know i i feel like yeah. i can text you anytime and it's like yeah. hey Juan, how are you doing it's like some directors or actors it's like it's a different relationship and yeah i don't know whether it's because of the project or really what we created or the leadership that we had you know it was um mm -hmm. it's something that i don't I don't take for granted, like those people that you connect with. It's like you want to, and we keep telling each other, we should work together again. Like maybe we <laughs> should make the sequel. <laughs> maybe, yeah, I mean, let's do yeah, I, I know. I feel like this would be a great mini series. Uh, yeah, no, I think this, like, this might have. Like imagine six episodes. <laughs> yep, it, it would blow my mind if, if we get the chance to do that. But um, but yeah, I just have to say it, it all, it was all organic, you know, that that's it the was word. It organic. <laughs> It was the weirdest thing. It was organic. Yeah. And, and we went out. It was like, hey, what are you doing? No, this and that. And then you will come. Like, I found a location. Like, tell us about it. Like, <laughs> so it was like, it was like we met. I never met them until I got to the location, too. It's not like we had. And we had very rehearse. few time. Yeah, no, no, no. It was. No, no. It, you guys met each fun. other playing with each other. Yeah. 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 It was it was the best time. And, and I, I hope everybody here watches the movie. If you haven't. Uh, for those of you that watched it, thank you for your questions. They were good questions, right? They were amazing questions. Yeah, no, I'm, I was. Thank like, you so wow. much for your time, people. Yes, no, <laughs> thank you everybody for your time. I'm going to watch it. And Juan and I, we talked that we want to get posters out, uh, signed, and also DVDs. So stay tuned because in the next couple of weeks, we're going to come up with something fun to do so you can get either CD or poster or like a bundle <laughs> and uh and and it will be just such a it's 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 something to celebrate this this is one of those movies that we have to keep pushing to celebrate so mm -hmm, stay tuned mm -hmm. because posters and dvds are in the making right now <laughs> that's right all right thank you so much everybody thank you everybody stay take tuned. care <laughs> bye 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 everybody this was so special I, I mean, it was, uh, it was so special, so touch having Juan here. I haven't seen him since we uh, didn't meet in Arizona uh, to do this little retake. Um, I, I learned so much from my directors and writers. I learned so much from the collaboration, but I also learned from them as people and, and just beautiful, um, you know, beautiful people that their whole intention is to be truthful to the story that they fall in love with. And Juan is, It's one of these uh, creators and artists that um, it's all about the heart and how can he put his heart out there either through story or through the characters and having the flexibility to put things out and, and also the vision to um, and also the vision to tell it and to and to trust it. Um, it was really, really, really nice to be part of this film. So for those of you that haven't watched it, please check it out. And for those of you that have, thank you. Thank you so much from the bottom of my heart for doing this, for submitting these beautiful questions. I learned so much from it. And, um, and, I, um, I, I, and I'm very, very proud and lucky to be part of this film. So thank you so much. I hope you have a beautiful Saturday. And stay tuned because posters and CDs are going to be out. We're going to make something really special for those of you that want to keep uh, supporting us and helping. So any little screenshots that you have, let me post them out. I'm going to be reposting them in my, in my um, stories on Spiked uh, social media too. They will be able to do that. 
uh, it was an absolute luxury to spend an hour with Juan. Thank you, Juan. And thank you guys for being part of this. I adore you. And stay safe, stay home, and stay strong. Bye, guys.